Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage two of the 24 Tour de France, brought to you by Bicycle, the largest global marketplace for pre-owned bikes with over 20,000 high-quality pre-owned and refurbished bikes available. Bicycle connects the buyers and sellers to make the process of buying and selling bikes safe, easy, and convenient. Sellers, remember to use the code Butterfly Effect 24 for 0% seller fee. Now let's get into today's magnificent stage two of the Tour de France. Guys, if you were sleeping in because you're on the West Coast, you got to get up and at least watch the last 35 kilometers of today's race. I'll fill in the first part, but you have to watch the last 35K because they're going to do a circuit of about 18 kilometers. Two times they're going to do the most famous climb in the in the race, Giro del Milia, that I've done before in my career. This climb is 1.9 kilometers long, and it's over 10.5% with 20% sections. The climb is a monster, and everyone knows it as Cote de San Luca. Now, when you get into this climb, it is mythical. Regardless of what you're watching, if the commentator tells you it's not mythical, it always is. It blows up races every time on here. The crowds are magnificent. They're stacked here on today's stage two of the Tour de France. So like I said, make sure you last watch the last 35 kilometers. If I take you all the way back to the beginning, though, with 199 kilometers to go, that's 125 miles thereabouts, it's going to be an exciting race. they got a bunch of bumps to go over that are super steep, some even steeper than San Luca, but they come in the middle of the stage. So those aren't mythical, but the last one certainly is. As we see the breakaway get up the road, we got 10 riders up there, and then we see Bram from DSM, Bram Wilton. He's going to drop out once we get into the first KOM climb. Up there in that group of nine now is going to be the KOM leader, that's Jonas Abrahansen. Abrahansen's taking maximum KOM points on every early category climb here in stage two. What's happening in the peloton? Well, the gap started to increase. I mean, it's getting way up there, six and seven and eight and nine minutes up there to the break. And then we're going to see that the DSM director, Sportif, just under 100 kilometers ago, he's going to tell us, guys, as he's brought the gap back down to about six minutes, maybe five and a half, we're going to see that the DSM director on the radio, he says, okay, we can start backing off. We can let the group come back together. We can have other guys start chasing in the back if they want to win today's race is what he's telling his teammates. Now, we come into the sprint competition and it's a bike throw up there at the front, and we see that Jonas Abrahansen, well, he wants some sprint points too, but let's back it up to the peloton because this is where the real action's happening, and I don't even need to show you the sprint. I'll just show you as the sprint's coming together, there's a crash in the very back. It's Jorgensen from Visa Lisa Bike that looks like he may have overlapped the wheel in front of him. Maybe he had a hand off his bars. It's going to have to be Jorgensen that tells you exactly what happens, but he's the first rider to go down. Then over to the left side, we see that's Enos de Plus. He goes down, he goes down hard. And as De Plus is going down, well, Van Art, the big guy that was trying to win yesterday, stage one of the Tour de France, he has to do kind of a step off to the right side. Then finally, he can't hold his body up, so he flops down on the ground. But it looks like it was done a little bit softer. As Wout Van Aert gets up on the bike and gets going, we see the thumbs up from Wout Van Aert. When the camera goes back and finds the Plus, the Plus isn't happy at all. They gave him a new bike, and then he's got to change bikes, and he's still not happy. Maybe they gave him the wrong bike. I don't know. But the Plus is all ripped up. His clothing's all messed up. Gets on another bike, gets going. When we look at what happened to Jorgensen, well, he got messed up on the right side of his body there like Wout Van Aert did. As Wout Van Aert spending time at the medical car, just getting touched up because he ripped his shorts back there too. Though All of them will get back in the front of the peloton. Now we start getting into about 60 kilometers to go. That gap that was down to about five minutes exploded back up to nine and a half because everybody in the peloton went curb to curb and nobody wants to ride on today's stage two of the Tour de France because with four big time favorites, everybody's trying to save energy. If you take the race win here on today's stage two of the Tour de France, you gotta at least be able to gain some time on the favorites if you're gonna put in effort. You don't wanna just wear the, wear the race leader's jersey, unless of course, maybe you're Rem Coavnipol because you're new here to the Tour de France, you might like the race leader's jersey, but, Rem, but aside from Rem Coavnipol, Primoz Roglic, well, he's a veteran, Tadej Pogacar's worn the jersey and, wore, and won it twice. And Jonas Finigo, well, he's done the same thing, won the Tour de France twice. So those three riders aren't interested in making the race too hard. We see the brake start going back out, like I said, up almost up to 10 minutes with about 60 kilometers to go. Now I gotta give you a 15 second ad from Bicycle, our sponsor today. <laughs> Remember to check them out in the description. Now when we get back into the race, like I said, the gap at 60 kilometers was going out to nine and a half, ten minutes. 
we see start seeing behind coming up one of the KOMs. It's my man Victor Campanots Lotto. Lotto's on the front and they're driving it and the gap from Victor Campanots is decimating the time up there to the front of the nine riders trying to hold off the peloton behind. As we start coming into the first circuit here, the first lap, it's about 35 kilometers to go. The nine riders in front, well, they're holding about a five minute gap back there. Victor Campanots is coming in. Visma Lisa bikes on the left side and the course is getting curb to curb from the peloton back there. We see my man Victor Campanots. He's telling his teammate there a little hand wave like, I got this under control. I'll take care of you guys. I'll get you in the climb as Victor Campanots, a time trial specialist. So he knows exactly what to do and how much energy to put into the pace. Now we go up to the group of nine as they're starting Cote de San Luca here, 1.9 kilometers at 10 and a half percent. Well, they got about a four and a half minute lead. At this moment, when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield, I'm like, if the favorites back there start attacking, these guys are decimated. They'll get brought back and we're going to see a GC battle and a stage victory here for the favorites back there in the Peloton. But they got to go full gas up this climb because at an 18 kilometer circuit with half of it being descent, and then you just got some flat sections that's fast before a climb again of two kilometers, you got to be going full gas. We look at the Peloton coming into San Luca right now. As we see up front, that's Tis Benut. Tis Benut's pulling hard, and he's going stringing the field out. The crowd is massive. Every Italian fan has come out. When we look up front at the breakaway, well, it started blowing up right away. We saw Arkea Samsic on the front because they had not one but two guys in here, and it's Christian Rodriguez that was going on the front. After he got done pulling on the front, it's Quentin Pasier from FDJ. He's splitting it. There's about six riders in front. My old teammate, Nelson Palace, and three other guys from from the breakaway or drop, dropping off the back, but the group up there starts to slow a bit, little bit, and everybody comes back up with Hugo Page being the last to come back up to complete the nine riders still halfway up San Luca right now. Then Axel Laurence, Albacine de Kunick throws in a huge attack, blows the group up, and somehow Jonas Abrahansen has found his way back up to this front group, and he'll go over the top of KOM getting maximum points. That means he's going to keep the race leader's KOM jersey at the end of stage two here for sure. As we they go over the top, they'll regroup coming back down the descent, but Nelson Oliver threw an attack. Now this is the way you want to do it when you're coming down the descent if you're Nelson Oliver and you just got dropped. The Movistar rider got dropped the first time going up San Luca, so he has to go down the descent or on the flat section. They bring him back down the twisty, crazy, fast technical descent here, and as it all comes back together along the flat section before they cross the finish line one more time, we're going to see attack from Hugo Page enter Marche. He attacks as he gets brought back. Nelson Oliver throws in a massive attack from Movistar. He goes up the left side. Now as he's going up the left side, Side. Look at the other eight riders on the right. Look at the two Arkea Samsic riders. One of these riders has to close the gap. Christian Rodriguez is the one that's sitting about fourth wheel. When we look a little bit behind him, that's Kevin Vakalon there from Arkea Samsic, his teammate. One of these two riders has to go. It's Kevin Vakalon that throws in the tack, going to the left side, trying to bring back Nelson Oliveira from Movistar. And he's got some company because that's the KOM jersey sitting on his wheel. But the KOM jersey, Jonas, he doesn't want to pull his legs. He knows he's got to save everything for the last time up the climb because he already got dropped back there. So as we see Kevin Vakalon looking back, giving the elbow there to the KOM jersey Jonas, he's like, I'm not doing it. And it takes about a K and a half right there from our KS Samsic rider Kevin to be able to close the gap up to Nelson Oliveira from Movistar. The three riders are all together. They got about a 15 second gap when they cross the finish line here with one lap to go. The group behind the six riders, ooh, they got some problems back there because Christian Rodriguez is always sitting second, third, fourth wheel back there trying to slow down the group for his teammate Kevin Vakalan up at the front. Now as the three riders come in the last climb, they got about a 35 second gap. Let's go back to the peloton and see what's happening as they went up the climb the first time here at San Luca. Well I told you, Tis Benut was on the front. He was drilling at full gas. Then Tade Pagacar comes up on the left side. As he starts to accelerate on the left side, you can tell it's not attack, but Jonas Vinigo wants to follow it anyways. He follows it closely. Tade Pagacar moves over to the right side of the road and grabs a bottle with an ice bag attached. You see him sit up up, ripped the ice bag up, it ripped the ice bag off from the bottle, puts the bottle in there, then comes up to his next one here and takes another bottle. Tip puts that bottle in his mouth and he sits up and he starts putting the ice pack behind his jersey like this. You know you got to have some good legs if the Slovenian's got time to sit up on the climb here. He's at the front of the GC favorite group when Tis Benut was going full gas and with the acceleration to just get some bottles and then back off, Tis Benut blew. Now we look at Jonas Vinigo as Tade Pogacar sitting up. Jonas Vinigo is going to look back over his shoulder. He's going to see his teammate. That's Jorgensen, the American rider, his number one lieutenant here. He's going to tell him to go to the front and Jorgensen starts setting some tempo. They're going up and over the top of the KOM here controlling the peloton. 
not. I'm thinking as I'm sitting on the Chesterfield, if I'm Jonas Vigo and I'm not certain of my form, I don't want Jorgensen on the front of the peloton for very long. And he must be thinking the same thing because finally they back off and Jorgensen slows the pace. And the peloton starts regrouping with about 50 riders. Up front, as we see the three riders hitting the last climb here, San Luca, and then we see Kevin Vaccalon. He doesn't waste any energy. He passes by on the left side, just starts accelerating, and we see Nelson Oliveira start opening up gap. Then we see Jonas Abrahansen there from Uno X in the KOM jersey. He starts opening up a gap. Kevin Vaccalon stays hard on the pedals, and then within a few moments later, he's got a gap. Looks like a winning margin if someone can't pull something spectacular out of the back of those six groups chasing because the peloton is over a minute back there. Now, as Kevin Vaccalon's going up the climb, full gas solo, let's go back and see what's happening with the peloton. Well, as they entered the climb here for the last time, it's Liddell Trek on the front. That's Tom Squinch. Squinch is going full gas in the climb. He's got his teammate Ciccone. Ciccone's sitting second wheel, but Tom Squinch doesn't have to hold it for very long as Tis Benut goes through the front. He's got Jonas Vinigo sitting on his wheel. Jorgensen followed behind him. Tade Pogacar's in there. Adam Yates is in a good position this time up the climb, and Carapaz is in a good position. As they get just a little bit further, we start finding Primoz Roglic, but he's like 20, 25th position as the climb started proper. Peace Benut's going full gas. I can't find Remco Evnipol anywhere. He must either be just in front or just behind Primoz Roglic, but up front, Peace Benut's going full gas for a few hundred meters. Then he blows, pulls off. Jorgensen from Bismillis, the bike takes over the front, but Adam Yates wants to go faster, or Tade Pogacar does is what I assume, and he told Adam Yates to go to the front because the lap before he cooled himself off with the ice bag. Now he's time to perform as Adam Yates is going full gas on the front. It's starting to split. Look as about one kilometer to go in this climb. As they come under the arches, we see about eight riders there, maybe seven coming out of the arches. As Adam Yates is going full gas, he's starting to split it. But Remco Adnipo's come back in the picture. I don't know where he is. It's like he's magical, magically came from the back and he's latched onto the front group of eight riders. We look at the helicopter angle. Eight riders in the front, two chasing. Primoz Roglic is in the third group, on the front of the third group, trying to do damage control. We go back up to the front with Adam Yates on the front. Not for very long, the Slovenian Tade Pogacar wants to throw an attack. As it starts to flatten off, just a hair. Guys, believe it or not, it's still 6%, 4% right here. But if you've ever done this climb before in training, and I've done it in racing, it's 18, 19% sections when it drops down to 4 or 5. It feels like it's flat. Tade Pogacar throws in a huge acceleration. Jonas Vinigo follows it directly. But if I back the film up just a hair, as I was telling you before, Remco Abnapol has found his way up to that group of 8. Then he had slotted in the fourth wheel up there just behind Tade Pogacar, so probably fifth. As Tade Pogacar threw in his attack on the left, Jonas went on on the right. Remco Ebnepoel was watching it happen. He had no more legs left at this moment in the race. We go up to the front too. They're going full gas as they're coming up near the summit. But before we go any further, let's look at the top of the KOM that was four minutes ahead of these guys because Kevin Bacalon went over the top of the KOM solo. And then behind, it's five, six riders chasing. As we see Jonas Abrahansen, he got pulled in and Nelson Oliveira got pulled in. But Kevin Bacalon's got about a 40 second gap. So you got to believe if he can make it down this descent, he's got a shot at winning stage two here. The Tour de France could be a back-to-back -back French victory here. And Arkea Samsic, while riding an Italian bike, they might be able to win today's stage if he can hold it up coming down the descent. We see Kevin Vaccalin is going full gas through all the corners. He's marking them beautifully, left side, right side, as he's bombing down the descent. We see the chase behind as they've got some some luggage back there because again Christian Christian Rodriguez from Arkea Samsic the teammate up there Kevin Vaccalon he's still sitting always in second third fourth position in this group just causing chaos back there so they can't get together and bring back Kevin Vaccalon who now is coming under two kilometers to go he starts realizing he's going to win today's race as we go back and look at the chasers well Christian Rodriguez right here from Arkea Samsic starts celebrating already with a big old grin and then a peace sign up there as he knows his teammate up front is going to win Kevin Vaccalon comes under 500 meters to go, starts looking back over his shoulder. Once he gets into the last couple hundred meters, sits up, thanks to sponsors, throws to both arms in a, in a power sign there of victory, and then punches the air as he crosses the line here. Stage two victory for Arkea Samsic. Behind in the group of six, what was happening? Well, we see that it was Jonas Abrahansen that gets a gap there in the final few hundred meters, holds it off for second, and then it's Quentin Pasture that rounds out the podium, sprinting the breakaway riders back there. Now let's go back and look at the
the GC battle because they still got to go up the climb. Tade Pagacar is drilling it on the front. Jonas Vini goes sit in second wheel. He won't take a pull with the Slovenian as the climb is still in its steepest sections here before they get to the top of the KOM. Look as they come up to the back of the motorcycle there and how close Tadej Pogacar is coming to the camera. Then as the camera flips around because Tadej Pogacar is going too fast for the motor to stay in front, the Slovenians full gas. We see that this the Denmark rider there, Jonas Vingo, holding on, sprinting. Then we see Tadej Pogacar start sprinting as he's nearing the KOM. They're going to go over two guys for the GC favorites here together and then behind what was happening. Back to film up just a hair as Tadej Pogacar started his tack with just under one kilometer to go. Carapaz was trying to be the rider to close the gap. Full gas, sprinting as hard as he can. And just behind him, somewhere back there, must have been Remco Avnipol because later we're going to see those two come into the pictures again. But first, we see the chasers back there. What's left as the, they were getting damaged right there and they couldn't close the gap. It's Bora Hansgro that was falling apart. Primoz Roglic was chasing. But now we see Primoz Roglic trying to close the gap. Up to Simon Yates up there from Jaco Alula. This group's about 15 a dozen riders right here as it's Simon Yates just up there in the corner as he's making the, making the left turn there. We see it's Primoz Rogoc. He's suffering. He's still four or five guys back from there. And his teammates are behind him. As they're trying to do damage control, they can't even ride the front. Bora Hansgro. Now they'll go over the top together with about 20 riders back there. But up front, Tade Pagacar's bombing down the descent. I'm sitting on the Chesterfield. I'm like, Jonas, this is the time to pull. Last year's 2023 Tour de France, when you went up over stage one, stage two, Yas Gibble, you definitely don't want to pull with Tade Pagacar because there's only a two horse race last year. Now we got a four horse race and you got time to be able to put on the other two riders. You got to pull with Tade Pagacar. Jonas Vinigo's thinking the same thing. He comes through. Not right away, but soon enough for Tadej Pogacar's liking. Tadej Pogacar slots in second wheel. Now, the top of this climb here, San Luca, is kind of bumpy and lumpy like this a little bit. So you don't want to get dropped by Tadej Pogacar. Jonas Vinigo's always saving a little bit and always a little bit hesitant each time Tadej Pogacar's pulling through this lumpy section before they start the descent proper. We're going to see Tadej Pogacar. He's looking over his shoulder. He's giving the left elbow. He's giving the right elbow. And Jonas Finigo still won't come through until they hit the descent proper. Now, once Jonas comes through, Tadej Pogacar sitting second wheel, then he'll relieve him. And they're rotating through pretty good, holding a 40 second gap on the GC favorites behind. But we don't know where Remco having the pull and Carapaz is. They've left us in the dark. They come down to the flatter section here as they're coming off the climb. They still got a gap of about 40 seconds, 35 seconds on the gap behind of the GC favorites. And then as we're coming into about one kilometer to go, well, Jonas Finigo's done working with Tadej Pogacar. Tadej Pogacar's pull it into one kilometer to go. And look at Remco Evnepoel back there with Carapaz. Carapaz and Remco Evnepoel got the two riders in their sights. Remco Evnepoel's trying to do damage control, trying to bring back the two favorites. He's in TT mode with Carapaz. As they come into 350 meters to go, Remco Evnepoel starting to close up on the back there of Tade Pogacar. Tade Pogacar's had enough. He's been pulling on the front for too long. Jonas Finigo didn't help him out quite enough. He did some work, but not enough. And Remco Evnepoel's made it back. So Tade Pogacar's had enough on the left side of the road. Then we'll see Jordan. Jordan, who was in the breakaway from Total Energy, throws in the first acceleration as they're getting caught to the line with 100 meters to go. Then Carapaz comes flying by him to cross the line first of the GC favors. Remco Evnipoel is just behind Jordan there. Jonas Vinny goes solid on third coming through with this GC group. And then we'll see Tade Pogacar come through last, but he's going to get the race leader's yellow jersey. And guys, Tade Pogacar looked like when they attacked, when Jordan attacked, when Carapaz attacked, when Remco Evnepoel followed it and Jonas Finigo followed it, Tadej Pogacar didn't even get out of the saddle. He just pushed on the pedals. Even as he's crossing the line there, you see him messing with his nose at the back of the group. The Slovenians got some form, but guess what? Jonas Vinigo has some form after the Stage 4 crash at the Basque Country. Doesn't look like it's affected him too much here on Stage 2 because Visma Lisa Biker in a shot of winning the Tour de France here. Now we look at the other GC favorites. Well, as Remco Evnepoel was attaching to Tadej Pogacar with 350 meters to go and the sprint started proper, the GC guys, the other ones, the Primoz Roglic, the other Slovenian, he was about 20 seconds back. So they'll cross the line, losing about 20, 21 seconds to Tadej Pogacar, Remco Evnepoel, and Jonas Finigo. But when I dissect the race proper, like really proper when you look at it, Remco Evnepoel was out of position the last time going up San Luca. Badly out of position. You had Tispanu going full gas. Jorgensen was going full gas. Adam Yates was going 100% with everything he had. And the same time when all three of those riders were pulling on the front, 
rim coavenal pull in a bad position. I'll call it probably 20, 25th position when the climb started. He was closing the gap himself coming up the outside. He had to be. I couldn't find him in the picture anywhere, but he closed up as the group was falling apart back there. Rem Coavnapul closed up all the way onto the back wheel of Tade Pagacha. Now, at that moment, he was going to need a little rest because we were under one kilometer to go. So that means 1.2 kilometers thereabouts. Rem Coavnapul was doing 100%, just as Tade Pagacha threw in his attack. After the climb, he was able to recover. He was able to go full gas. Yes, I know Tade Pagacha and Jonas Vinigo played a little bit of cat and mouse. Not a lot, but a little bit of cat and mouse once the group, once the road flattened out a little bit. Rimko Evnopoul attached at 350 meters to go, but he had to be something remarkable. So we have at least a three horse race up here. And Primoz Rogic, realistically, he started in a bad position too. The group split in half. You saw him pulling in the third group. He salvaged it, only losing 20, 21 seconds. But what worries me about Primoz Rogic is his whole team. Vlasov and Jai Hindley, when I backed the film all the way up, they started the last climb in good position and Primoz Roglic wasn't near them. And by the time he got up there, they couldn't help. When I show you them chasing down the descent, well, we see Vlasov on the front. And then finally, when it was still lumpy and bumpy at the top and just starting to go down, Vlasov pulls off to the left. The race leader's yellow jersey, Bardet comes around the left side, is moving to the front. And we're going to see Bardet and DSM actually get into the front as Bora Hansgro are sitting in the back. Not one, not two, but three riders in the back of this group. And Tade Pogacar, Jonas Vinigo, Rem Koabnapul, and Carapaz. Richard Carapaz, remember I told you, he's one of the only five guys to be able to ride at any length of time on the final climbs with the four best riders in the world at any point in time during the Tour de France. He's been solid at different times of the seasons, but right now he's up there. So how good is he? So at that whole time, when those four riders are going away, Bora Hansgro sitting at the back of the group and not pull it. So Bora Hansgro is going to do some damage control and everybody better get better here at the Tour de France. Otherwise, we have a three, maybe a four horse race if Carapaz is looking as good as he looked today on San Luca, but it's a 1.9 kilometer climb. So we don't know yet until we start getting into stage four to find out who really is good here at the Tour de France and who's not. But Tade Bogaccio is good. Jonas Fini goes back from the dead. We know that. So we got an exciting 2024 edition. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next edition real soon.